Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, I may have said it a thousand times, never forget that Oklahoma is an energy state, which we are, but we're also much, much more. Today, our focus is on aviation and the impact it has on our economy, and we begin in the Oklahoma City Metro. Now it rivals in terms of employment, uh, the energy sector. So it's one of our largest sectors and most important to the, the regional economy. We'll take a closer look at the jobs Boeing has created since landing in Oklahoma. This is a sector of our community that is really seeing rapid growth. And, and so not only is it more jobs, it's phenomenally good jobs. Uh, these are you know, highly paid jobs, highly professional jobs. And Austin Moore takes us outside the city lights to look at a leader in aftermarket aircraft replacement parts. We're the world's leader in aftermarket general aviation interior and exterior plastics. And then we end our show with an Oklahoman flying high thanks to her early engineering education. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by CareerTech a job for every Oklahoman, and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Rob McClendon. Well, it's long been thought that energy and agriculture were the main drivers of Oklahoma's economy, but today it is a different story. Currently, aerospace employs roughly one in 10 workers in the state, but in order to continue to thrive, industry leaders say it needs people with the right skills. More than 500 aerospace related companies do business in Oklahoma with an annual industrial output that exceeds $12 billion. It's an economic impact that's felt statewide, but nowhere more so than in the Oklahoma City Metro. And that's where our Blaine Singletary starts us off. In a state economy that's seen its better days, there's one industry that's really taking off. It's really the, the result of a lot of diversification uh, effort intentionally by the community, but now it rivals in terms of employment, uh, the energy sector. Kurt Foreman is part of the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber, and he says Oklahoma's aerospace industry is one to watch. In 2015, it was responsible for outputting $4.9 billion into the economy, and half of that is labor income. On average, an aerospace job, sort of all diced up into the same size, would be about 30% better paid than on average for our area. Aerospace is booming, and it's not just at your local airport. Aerospace manufacturing, engineering, education, and maintenance also play a big part in employing thousands of Oklahomans. But at the heart of it all are government establishments, like the Mike Monroney FAA Aeronautical Center and Tinker Air Force Base, which employs the most civilians out of any Air Force Base in the country. That's part of what makes our aerospace community here in central Oklahoma special is that uh, the government, in particular the Air Force and the FAA, play such a, a dramatic piece. Just those two alone represent a very large percentage of the direct employment. Because of this growth, new jobs are opening up all the time, and it's never been a better time to get trained for them. There are a tremendous number of jobs, and it's going to be important for us to have people want to step up and be a part of these kinds of career paths uh, going forward, or we won't see this sector continue to grow. It's really a two-way ticket. Education in this industry isn't just profitable to the potential employee, it's profitable to the state economy as well. We're probably the best kept secret in the entire state as far as our abilities. Ron Davis is lead instructor at Gordon Cooper Technology Center's Aviation Maintenance Technology Program in Shawnee. This program, one of many at tech centers all over the state, is an example of just how diverse this industry is within itself. Now we don't, we don't build airplanes here, but we sure fix them, and we fix a lot of them. At any one time, Davis and his fellow instructors in the program are training 100 students, both from high schools around the area and adult students learning a new trade. And the demand is high. We've had a waiting list since 2001. 
basically. Everybody would like to get in the program. I, I wish we could take everybody in the program that we can. Davis says the career itself is a big draw, but the fact that this career is growing right here at home is also a plus. We just scaled it down. Some like to move, but most of them like to live where they grew up. So the folks that come through Gordon Cooper and they're from Shawnee or they're from Prague or from Payton or Bowley or McLeod or Meeker, they want to live there and they can do that and the majority of them commute and go to Tinker. Programs like these take a homegrown workforce and turn it into a qualified homegrown workforce, which is essential as Susan Lavrakis, longtime member of the Aerospace Industries Association, told us. It's absolutely vital. Our, our, our leaders, our industry leaders, our CEOs tell us that a qualified workforce is the most critical factor to our industry success. And obviously being a very high technology industry, we must have people who are the best and the brightest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So I would say there's nothing more important than a highly qualified STEM workforce to our future. STEM is very important to the aerospace industry, and the problem is there's not enough students in high school and earlier favoring STEM courses. And that could send this industry into a nosedive. Our industry started recognizing about eight years ago that with the baby boomers retiring, we're just going to go into a deep dive in terms of losing our best and brightest, people who studied STEM back in the Sputnik era. But that aging out of current personnel means all the more opportunity for the next generation of aerospace engineers. It's going to open up a lot of positions for young people uh, to enter our industry. There's going to be great potential for new opportunities to lead, to grow in this industry, and that's a story that we're trying to make more people aware of. The aerospace industry has arrived in Oklahoma. Now it just needs the workforce to get on board. Again, Kurt Foreman. Most people think it's about land or buildings, and that is a factor, but the reality is if the labor force is not in a community or in a region, it, just, it can't happen. So really, uh, it's not sort of location, location, location. It's people, people, people with the right skills. Well, a survey from PricewaterhouseCoopers shows Oklahoma ranks 16th in the nation when it comes to aerospace manufacturing. And while the tax environment here is favorable for the industry, a qualified workforce is necessary for the industry's ascent to continue. Now when we return, we'll give you an inside look at one of the fastest growing aerospace employers in the state. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon with Rob McClendon. Weekly insight into your changing world. Well, the Boeing Company has been in Oklahoma since World War II, supporting Tinker Air Force Base. But in the past decade, we've seen their numbers of employees more than quadruple. It's an example of just how far you can go when industry, government, and education all work together to create jobs. And we were there at the opening of Boeing's new $80 million facility. It was an event a century in the making. On the Boeing Company's 100th anniversary, a new 300,000 square foot research and development lab opened its doors in Oklahoma City. So it was just a, sh a year ago that we broke ground for this facility on a hot July day. Mike Emmelhans is Boeing's senior site executive. We'll do integration work, we'll do modification work. A lot of the aircraft that we support as they age or we need to find new capabilities for them, these are the labs that will find those innovative answers. For a company whose footprint continues to grow in the state, building new facilities and adding new jobs. Governor Mary Fallon. Well, the economic impact of these jobs is, is huge. It's an $80 million investment, 800 jobs that are high paying, good jobs, and Oklahoma's second largest industry, which is the aerospace industry. Boeing now employs more than 2,500 Oklahomans while spending close to $900 million with local suppliers, an impact that supports directly or indirectly an additional 28,000 jobs. This is a sector of our community that is really seeing rapid growth and, and so not only is it more jobs, it's phenomenally good jobs. Uh, these are you know, highly paid jobs, highly professional jobs. That did not arrive by accident. Tax breaks from the state and city were all key in bringing Boeing's headquarters for aircraft modernization into Oklahoma. One of the first laws I signed uh, 
almost six years ago as governor was to put in effect an aerospace engineer's tax credit, which I know has helped Boeing keep jobs, maintain jobs, bring new jobs to our state. Attracting talented engineers to Oklahoma, having the right kind of skills to do the type of work we need is, is very critical. And it's a competitive market out there, uh, as the governor said. STEM education is so critical and getting the right level of and volume of people that can fill those critical jobs is very tough. So anytime you have an incentive that's offered that is more attractive to an employee and gives you a little bit of an opportunity to, to capture them in a very competitive market is a great thing. In attracting young system engineers like Natalie Neal. I grew up in St. Louis for the most part and so I knew Boeing was a great company to work for. And, but uh, wasn't quite so sure about working in Oklahoma City. I figured Oklahoma, I'd probably be here like a year or two, you know, get established in Boeing and move off to a coast somewhere more exciting. Uh, but then I ended up really liking the state. I like, really like the job and the people I worked with. And so I'm about to hit six years here now. And while tax breaks may attract high-skilled workers into Oklahoma, it takes more than incentives to bring a company like Boeing into the state. At the end of the day, how strong your workforce is, how efficient they are, how talented they are, that's really what makes the, the business click. All those other things are great enablers and they make us stronger and more cost effective. But at the end of the day, it's, it's the people that, that are the engine that get you the results you want. And therein lies the challenge. Even though Boeing's average salary is $90,000 annually, the company still struggles to fill some positions. We never have enough. We never have enough in the pipeline. We would love it if there were 100 applicants for every job that we have. We do get a lot of applicants, but we're looking for some very specialized skills. Steve Hendrickson handles Boeing's government operations in Oklahoma. We recruit nationally. Um, I will tell you from experience, we have some magnificent candidates that come to us from the coasts, either East Coast or, or West Coast. What we have found over time is those folks come here, they do an absolute magnificent job. Uh, they support our customer very admirably, but as they get some experience under their belt, they're more inclined to go back to home. We find, uh, although we recruit nationally, we have a lot better success rate finding folks with ties in our general area or in the surrounding states because they're more apt to stay with us and more apt to stay in the community if their families are closer. Which makes local education critical to Boeing's employee pipeline. I think our, our education system, we really need to take a, a hard look at that. It's important. Uh, it's a foundation of what made this country great. I think it's the foundation of uh, when we look at the next century for Boeing, it'll be key that we have a strong education system that can support the types of jobs and innovative uh, uh, initiatives that we're going to need going forward. When large employers are making work placement decisions, the quality of the collaboration among the education community and what we call the talent pipeline, which is a fancy way of saying how many folks are available in that specific jurisdiction that have the skills that we need in order to execute our business plan. Um, the skills development and the talent development pool are one of the big contributing factors now for work placement decisions, so it's critically important. Not just to develop future employees, but to retain those they already have. Young engineers often have young families, and good schools, key to employ retention. Being an engineer moving into Oklahoma City, I was afforded that same opportunity. Boeing's Lynette McKinnon says while the aerospace engineer's tax credit may have influenced some engineers to move to Oklahoma, it's other things that have kept them here. It's not just about the job that you do every day but you've got a family to make sure that um, they're in a good place. So the quality of life that Oklahoma can afford people um, is a, another key factor. Well, it's projected that Boeing's expansion will have a $637 million impact in Oklahoma City in the next four years, but not everything the company is doing can be measured in dollars and cents. For example, when the young systems engineer Natalie Neal isn't busy rebuilding airplanes, she's rebuilding houses for the elderly. Now to hear her tell her story of giving back to the community, just head over to OKHorizon.com and look under our value added section. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, educating the educators. 
but first, big time jobs in small town Oklahoma. Well, aerospace contributes about $190 million in state and local taxes annually, and that's not just in the metro areas. Our Austin Moore takes us to the wide open spaces of Northwest Oklahoma. Perched at the end of Alva's Municipal Airport, this simple metal building holds one of Oklahoma's more remarkable secrets. We're the world's leader in aftermarket general aviation interior and exterior plastics. Mark Seaver is the general manager for Vantage Plane Plastics, where they produce parts for an enormous uh, number of small planes. These racks hold the 3,500 different uh, PMA parts tools that we have today. Uh, the Moonies, the Beaches, the Pipers, Grumman's, Helios, Commander, uh, Learjet, the smaller airplanes, the personal airplanes. What you find on these shelves are not the parts themselves, but rather molds that will be used to form the parts as they are ordered. Airplanes are regulated differently than other forms of transportation. So each of these 3,500 part molds requires part manufacturer approval from the FAA. We build a mold to match that part, uh, prepare the data for the FAA, the engineering data. That process can take anywhere from 90 days to two years. Just depends on how fast you can get it through the FAA. Despite these hurdles, the sheer variety of personal planes flying today creates ongoing opportunities for Vantage. There's 50 years of airplanes that have been built that I, I would have to look at every single model to see whether or not my parts fit. So there's a lot to be had. We continue to look for growth. We continue to look for parts that we're not producing that's, today that's, and the demand that's out there. Okay, what plane are we working on? But with a shrinking number of general aviators creating his market, Seavers elevates the import of innovation. If we can keep the cost at a low cost or drop the cost because we've innovated, then that just enables us to get those parts to those customers at the right price so that ultimately you can help grow the industry. One way to do that, in an area where workforce can be quickly thinned out by the ebbs and flows of the oil and natural gas sector, is using the lean manufacturing principles of the Toyota production system. These focus on reducing waste increasing value and continuous improvement. It also means that Vantage now operates with a smaller, better trained, more experienced workforce that is more stable. We've been at a peak of 58, uh, probably six or seven years ago. Today, the 22 that we have are producing the revenue volume that were being produced by the 58 originally. Uh, the experience level has a lot to do with it. Uh, keeping your turnover rate low and gaining the experience along with the lean applications. Seaver also credits his neighborhood. I think it's the general attitude of Alva that they are very supportive of the businesses that, that are here and that, that look to come here. From Northwest Technology Center, all of our safety training and any other classes that I might require, they take care of the training for us. Pioneer has done some scanning capability for me out of Ponca City to Northwestern, to the leaders within the community, to the Oklahoma Manufacturing Alliance enabling some of the stuff that we do. And that stuff is exceptional. The kind of business Oklahomans would gladly brag about if they only knew it was here. This is kind of a diamond in Northwest Oklahoma. Uh, like somebody said, it's not often you find a the world's leader in aviation sitting in the corner of Oklahoma building parts. They just don't know what's there. Well, average wages in aerospace are well above the state average. Take a look at these numbers. Aerospace engineers top the list with an average salary of 88,900. Now, engineering and operation technicians follow at 68.6. Avionics technicians average salaries come in at 52.5, while mechanics and service technicians average right at $50,000 annually. Horizon is at your fingertips. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to catch the segments you may have missed and our latest new content as it happens. Well, educating the educators is the first step in helping fill the aerospace jobs of tomorrow. 
That's why a group called the Aerospace Education and Industry Partnership brings in teachers from around the state for a full day of training each summer. Middle school instructor Kelly Wardlaw says what she learns there transfers to the classroom. They have a passion for aerospace. Um, our students like to think about being astronauts or flying planes and it's something that we can bring into the classroom to spark their interest in our subject areas whether that's math or science or even English. We can bring aerospace in and it gets some of those students who maybe don't want to be in the classroom or, or they're, they're sitting back there and they're going, math doesn't apply to me, I don't even, you know, this, is, this class is a waste of my time. And then you start talking about aviation and aerospace and how math is important, they're going, whoa, that's really cool, I want to fly a plane, I want to be an astronaut, I want to work on an airplane, what a cool job that would be, and oh wow, I need to know math to do that? Okay, what were you saying again? Oklahoma CareerTech's H.L. Baird says for many students, that means hands-on learning. Education with application is always more effective. If you have a, a student engaged and they get excited about it, they see, they answer that, that question that just tore me up in school and that's, why do I need to know this? And so when you show them that this algebra allows you to calculate the performance of the object you're creating, students put it together. It becomes intrinsic and they just learn it better. And aerospace is a huge part of the economy in Oklahoma. So all that we can do to get them to engage and embrace STEM is going to create a better society and a better career for them. So that's why we do it. And for some of these students, that education continues at a Career Tech Pre-Engineering Academy. Our Courtney May met a U.S. Naval officer who says it was the academy at Gordon Cooper Technology Center in Shawnee that launched her into a career of flying jets. Since she was eight years old, Whitney here wanted to fly jets. And today, her dream hasn't changed. When I was eight years old, my mom took me to OU Center Flight Academy. And through that camp, you learn all thing, everything associated with flight, like aerodynamics, uh, how rockets fly, how airplanes fly, everything like that. And then at the end of the week, once you've learned all those things, they take you up in, in a small aircraft and you get to fly for probably about half an hour. Ever since then, I've wanted to be a pilot, and I found out that, you know, military flies jets, so I wanted to join the military and fly jets. Here found her pathway to the military while in high school, when she joined Gordon Cooper Technology Center's pre-engineering program, which gave her the math and science foundation she needed to enter the Naval Academy. And the pre-engineering academy drew me to Gordon Cooper, so this gave me kind of a solid platform to stand on as far as physics, chemistry, and math. Sue Frericks is a pre-engineering instructor at Gordon Cooper Technology Center. Frericks taught here while she was in the pre-engineering academy, and she is still the person here calls for advice today. Whitney was incredibly gritty is the word I would use because she worked hard and she never gave up. She was always willing to come in after class or to ask questions and um, just stick with it to get it done, whatever that took. My instructors kind of just, they kept me going with the frustrating days of, you know, I'm not good at physics, I'm not good at math. They're like, well, you want to go to the Naval Academy, so and then we need to get this figured out. I spent hours after school with Ms. Frerichs, uh doing math for the ACT, just practicing those problems and things. As a student at Gordon Cooper, here was involved in Skills USA, public speaking, and FIRST Robotics, and she spends her spare time mentoring students in these organizations. It is really important to us to see our students carry on that tradition of mentoring and reaching out and helping other people see opportunities that are available in STEM. Flying is probably the most amazing experience I've ever had. And flying in a jetliner, you know, you hop on Southwest or something and fly across the country, that's not the same. Being in the cockpit, being the person that's there, is like everything that you do is what the airplane's gonna do. Totally different experience. It's a little bit scary, but amazing at the same time. Want to see more stories like this? All our segments are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV.
unless you snagged a bargain on a mattress or a laptop, President's Day came and went this year without much fanfare. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we look back at the man who made the executive branch what it is and the lessons we can learn from George Washington. That U.S. Constitution would be the supreme law of the land. The life of George Washington on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Thanks for including us as part of your day. I'm Rob McClendon. Hope to see you back here next week. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry.